What's up, everybody? And welcome to another episode. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share the video. Hit the join button and become a member. Why? Will members get exclusive content? Hit the bell icon on my channel so that you'll receive a notification every time that I drop a video. You can go and watch the video, like the video, and leave a comment if you support me and support my channel. If you're wondering how come I have on the same shirt as my last video for you nosy people, it's because this is my second video today. Since I missed yesterday for the first time, I'm dropping two videos in one day. Let's go. Let's get to work. Go up movement. Let's work. Let's go. What y'all thought this was? Let's go. What y'all thought this was? I'm here to work. Let's get into it. The situation that transpired with the Hoovers and, of course, the neighborhoods in Corcoran in 1995. I was there uh, pretty much at the center of this situation. Now, I didn't put bloody or put war on the thumbnail because it wasn't necessarily a bloody situation and it wasn't war. And I don't want to, you know, misrepresent what happened. It was almost a war, though, but something did go down. I was there with the homie, and I was 21 years old. I was there with the homie, uh, Big Chuck Luck from 7 Four. The big homie, Big Chuck Luck, Big Hondo, rest in peace, from 7 Four was there as well. And uh, the homie Dog from 9 Four, or 9 Deuce. And uh, we had this dude named Cartoon from A Trey. He wasn't really one of the cartoons, though, but we kept him around. He, he wasn't really uh, from a set like that, but we kept him around for different reasons. This sort of situation being one of them, as I said before. This is the sort of thing that happens. And uh, who else was there? Slep Rock, as I said, from 60s was there. Flip from 40s was there. And Pookie from 40s. Pookie was a young dude, had long braids, and we was about the same age. Him and I ended up getting very close, or real close, pretty good, pretty close after this situation transpired, actually. And Flip and I became pretty close. Big Black from 107 was my ace boom kapoon. We walked the yard together every day. And that was the big homie. He was 28 years old at the time, but that was still a G homie. I was 21. And rest in peace, the big black. Something happened with that situation, man. And it still bothers me. I don't even want to get into it. Rest in peace, the big black, though. Speaking of Corcoran, because him and I stomped that Corcoran yard hard. And we was pushing hard on everybody there. That's about, that, that's, that's about I'm lying there to tell you. Uh, the homie... Uh, from uh, PDL was there. I'm trying to think of his name, man. A young player, dude, too, man. I, re I really like this dude. Uh, but, so we were all there on the yard. But Black, Big Black from 107, he hadn't got on the yard yet. It was another young dude from neighborhood there, light skin, had waves, had like a little, uh, uh, a little flat top, you know, a little crew cut type thing with waves. So not necessarily a flat top, but he had waves. Uh, uh, a, a fade with waves. He was a little player dude too. <clears throat> I can't think of his name. And we had, when I say we, I mean the Hoovers, had this dude kicking it with us from Linwood. The homie, the big homie, Big Chuck Luck, brought this dude around. I forget who the dude from Linwood's brother was, but his brother is or was is and was an OG from 7-4 Hoover. Big Chuckala, the big homie on the yard, he knew his brother, grew up with his brother, whatever, because they're both OGs from 7-4. His brother is a reputable. I can't think of his name right now, but when I think of his name, I, I, I let it be known. He's a reputable. I just can't think of his name right now. And because of this, because Chuckala knew his brother, Chuckala brought this dude around. You'd have thought that he was from Hoover, this dude from Linwood. He wasn't from Linwood neighborhood. I forgot. He was from a crib setting in Linwood, but one of the smaller sets out there. I forget where he was from, but it wasn't from Linwood neighborhood. But he, <clears throat> Chuck Luck, he brought him around. And just like the dude from Kitchen that I mentioned, you'd have thought he was from Watts. Like the dude from Tennessee, you'd have thought he was from Long Beach. 
you'd have thought this dude right here was from Hoover. He's with us every day, working out with us, smoking with us, drinking with us. He in a cell with one of the homies. He's one of us, bro. He's adopting our politics, essentially. And it's all because his brother is an OG from 7 4. And Big Chuck Luck said he needs to chill with us. He was he was the only one from his hood on the yard. So we embraced him and we accepted him. Now, something happened. I can't recall exactly whether he was accused of stealing something or not paying for some contraband. It was one of the two. But it happened with the neighborhood car. And so, I'm in a cell with Snag from Dura. That's the young homie, that's my celly. I got love for Snag to this day. And we in a cell together. Now, of course, the Durocks in the 60s, they don't get along either. I ain't been in the building more than a month and a half or two months, just coming from Avenal, my first time on a level three. I, I don't really know anything. And the homies ain't necessarily lacing me up with certain stuff. This is a level three. Not a lot of weapons involved. Not a lot of politics. Just chill with your car. And, and, and that's really it, bro. So I don't really know the ins and outs of this penitentiary thing just yet. Having just been here for a month and a half or two months. First time on a level three. Avenal, you can't even count that as really being in prison. Since it's a level two, more like Disneyland. And one day, I'm sitting on my bunk, and I'm in there talking to my cell, Snag from Durock. And this dude, Slap Rock, he in the building with me. He got juice, bro. I know I say that a lot, but he had juice, period. He had juice. He was, he, he, he was running the neighborhood car. He had a big sack. He had money. And he was a young player type dude. Casper from East Coast, from 8-9 East Coast was up there. They, they looked alike. Two tall, light-skinned dudes with flat tops. Both had, both was players. Both had a big sack. You know what I'm saying? Corcoran was popping, and these dudes had it going. Slept Rock was one of the main dudes on the yard. Bottom line. One day, he come to my cell, and he called the homie from Durock to the, to the door. And he like, uh, man, this, he hot. He like, man, this dude whoa, whoa, took something. Like I say, all right, he ain't paying me my money, man. Woo, ready? I'm get this dude, man. I'm ready to get this dude. You know what I'm saying? So Snag was like, okay, like you know, cause he know he, ain't, you know, like whatever. So he like he from Hoover, right? And he threw up Hoover. Slept right there. He like he from Hoover, ain't he? I'm sitting on the bunk, and I, cause I'm hearing him at the window at, at the cell door, and, and so he threw up Hoover and said he from Hoover, ain't he? This after he didn't already said he about to attack this dude, or he's ready to attack him that he's fed up with him or whatever. Because again, this dude is with us every day, all day. Everybody think he's from Hoover, bro. If you ain't hit him up personally, you think he's one of us. So now, I do take umbrage to this. Because I'm saying, how you gonna come to my cell? You know I'm from Hoover, right? And how you gonna come to my cell, throw up Hoover, and talk about you finna attack a dude from Hoover? Even though you talking to somebody else, you had a Hoover cell, though. You know I'm in the cell. So I, ju so I jump off the bunk. But when I jump off the bunk, he didn't already walked off. Slept Rock didn't already walked off. Say what he had to say and he walked off. So there's no program, no more program for me that night. So the next morning, we go to breakfast. I already told Snack from Do Rock, man, this dude got me fucked up. He like, nah, bro, he ain't mean nothing. He ain't mean nothing. I said, nah, I ain't trying to hear none of that, man. You know what I'm saying? So we go to breakfast, and on the way back from breakfast, we walk, you, you know, you can walk to breakfast in Corcoran on the way back from breakfast, and they have different buildings going to breakfast as well. So the chow hall is typically full. A lot of stuff goes down in the chow hall in Corcoran, in every prison. We're coming back. Slip Rock, he's coming up behind me. So I turn around. I say, bro, I, I said, uh, what if the dude, what? I said, first of all, dude ain't from Hoover, bro. He from Linwood. But what if he was from Hoover? You know what I'm saying? How you gonna come to my cell talking about what you finna do to somebody that you think from Hoover, bro? Who the fuck you think I am? He like, man, I ain't mean it like that. I wasn't even gonna trip. You know what I'm saying? But shit, since you come that shit, shit fuck it, then whoa, and he walked off. Like, he like, fuck it, I'll trip then. You know what I'm saying? And walked off, right? So I'm like, man, let's trip then. So I'm trying to catch up with the dude. He done walked off. 
He run up in the building. He ain't, he ain't, I ain't saying he ran from me. He go up in the building, bro. I'm trying to catch up to him. So now, some I still don't know. I promise you, bro, because there are no cell phones at the time. I still don't know to this day how all the Hoovers found out what the hell happened. Because I'm talking about it's like 30 minutes later that we got yard. It's yard time now. This same morning, after I, me and Slept Rock had this exchange on the way back from breakfast. I'm already in the cell, and I'm getting ready. Already had a little small piece. There's a level three, not many pieces there. But some people do have pieces. And I had one. And I'm preparing. I know we got yard coming up this morning. I'm like, man, I got to get word to the homies. I'm already thinking I got to shoot them kites. I got to hurry up. Because I know he got juice. He going to be able to come out and let all his homies know what's going on, bro. So, and, and my homies going to be in the blind. So I'm like, I got I to gotta, I gotta get word to them. But I, I, it's crazy, I swear. When they, they, they open up the yard and slept rock and this little fat dude from 60s too with braids, dark skinned dude, they come to my cell, right? My cell door, not, we in the same building, me and slept rock. My cell, my, ain't no other hoopers in the building, but we pretty deep on the yard. My cell block or my cell door is not open yet. So I'm sitting there, and I, I got my shoe, I got my foot on the toilet, I'm tying my shoe. But I got my thing already. I look up, both of these dudes at my door, right? They had a chance to open my door and get me right then, really, if that's what they wanted to do. So I'm like, what's up, bro? Right? I got my thing, they, I got my thing right there. I get up on the door so they can't see me pull my pull my thing out, right? So I get up on the door, I'm like, what's up? I'm thinking, they, I'm thinking they about to try to open the door and run in here. It's all good. I'm finna, I'm finna get you. You know what I'm saying? I got something for you. Wait, I'm, I'm waiting on you. So Slept Rock instead, he said, so what's up, bro? What's finna go down out here? He said, just like, you're like, what's finna go down out here? I said, man, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't thinking that the homies even know. I'm thinking the first thing I got to do is get words to my homies. Because I'm sure you already got words to your homie. Hell, you, you at the door with one of them right now. So I'm like, I don't know, bro. You know what I mean? I know I want to squabble with this dude, though, because he came to my cell saying all this stuff. So when I go outside, every Hoover that's in Corcoran State Prison on CR is in front of the building waiting on I don't know how they found out what had just happened. It just happened 30 minutes before, bro. I don't know how they found out to this day. But they all made it out of their cells and was in front of the building waiting on me to make sure I made it safely out of the building. They were out there lined up. I was so proud. I said, man, we out here thick. The homies out here. It's finna go up. That's what I'm thinking. I'm young, bro. I'm thinking, yeah, it's on out here. It's finna, I'm finna get this dude. So I come out, and Big Hondo first. He like, so what's up, bro? What happened? Whoa, whoa. It's the, that's the G homie, you know. So I run everything down to him. I told him what happened. So we walking off as we talking, the whole the whole car. The neighborhoods, they all out there too. They they grouping up in front of three block. Where they used to hang out at, really. So as we walking by, the homie dog said something to him, Slip Rock, what happened, man? What's, what's all this about? So Hondo told him, man, don't say nothing to him. Don't say nothing to him, bro. And so we kept, dog like, all right, all right. And we kept walking. Hondo don't want to negotiate. He certainly don't want to be the one to first come to the table with some sort of negotiating, all, all this talking and all that. He said, don't say nothing. Let's go over here and talk. We finna talk. So we went over there against the wall, and I ran down to all the homies what happened. So they're like, all right, so what you want to do? So now what happened was they tried to turn it on Snag from Durock, my cellie. The little dude from, 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 from neighborhood, light-skinned one with the waves, he said, man, he called Snag walking around the track. And he said, man, you the one starting all this, bro. You the one started all this. And you not even from, you ain't from Hoover, you ain't from neighborhood. You the one starting all this, bro. We should get you. Right? So so we can avoid a riot with these dudes over you. We need to just get you, bro. Right? So they run back and tell me what didn't happen. I mean, they over there act like they, they, they pressing snag. But first, the homie Chuck and them have pushed up on this dude. And Chuck and Luck 
and them said, and he had some, they was all out there, bro. But, you know, he was the one doing some of the talking. So Chuck Luck said that his leg was shaking. The dude from the neighborhood, that his leg was shaking. So he said, man, you got to be careful with these type of dudes. They get to swinging on you and all that just out of fear. So I'm like, okay. So this is the same dude whose leg was shaking that's now pressing snag, saying, man, instead of us going up with these hoovers over you, we need to just get on you. So they come and tell me, and they asked me, Big Earl from Five Deuces there. And he asked me, bro, people want to know, do you got your celly back? They act like they ready to just get your celly and that'll end all the conflict. Do you got your celly back in this situation, which means that we all got to go up still. I said, yeah, I got his back, bro. That's my celly. I ain't finna let these dudes, what he, he ain't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? This dude, this dude came to the cell and called him to the door and got the popping and all this about what he finna do to another Hoover, bro. Now they want to put it off on him. He ain't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got his back, bro. They ain't finna do nothing to my celly. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all with me or what? The homie's like, yeah, we we gotta be with you. So if you with your celly, then that's what it is. Long story short, bro, Slap Rock came over there and talked to him. He like, man, let me talk to you. So I walked over there by him, and he like, man, I didn't mean no disrespect, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's just that your boy did this and did that. I said, yeah, man, but you talking about like he from Hoover, right? Right after you said you were about to smash him and all that. I can't go for that, bro. Me and you got to get out. You know what I'm saying? Me and you can just get out, bro, that way. And we ain't got to all go up out here or whatever. It's all good. We, Me and you just going to sell and get out here, bro. But he didn't want to get out with me, bro. I ain't, you know, I ain't finna, I ain't saying he marked out or whatever. The fight didn't end up happening, bro. But Cartoon, the one that was there claiming a Trey, he went to sell and got out with the dude from the neighborhood that was out there running his mouth, the light-skinned one. That was, that was really popping it off the whole while, but was over there with his leg shaking, according to reports. And so they just went in there and fought, bro, so that we can resolve it. And after that, Pookie and I from Fodies became real tight. And, and, and Flip from Fodies, him and I, they, they used to look out for me, bro. Pookie, like I say, was a young brown skin dude. He had some pretty bra coming to see him. He had a couple of women coming to see him. They was breaking him off. He had the yard sold up. Him and Slept Rock, they both had a big sack. The neighborhoods, they really always been about their money. And like I said, the boy from East Coast was up there, and he had it going on. The Fresno car was up there, a uh, uh, homie from Six Deuce Diamond. He had a big sack up there. But anyway, so that's what happened between the Hoovers and the neighborhoods. We was out there, and it was about to go up, bro. It was about to go up. I had my piece. I let the homies know that I had a little piece and that I really, I want to go at this dude, Slap Rock. But I kind of like Slap Rock. Slap Rock was a cool dude. But I just didn't like the way he came to my cell and did that. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, it's like, you know, if I think a dude from 60s, I ain't finna go to a dude from 60s cell like, yeah, I'm finna smash this dude. Man, that's stupid. I'm, I'm letting his homeboy know that, you know, I'm putting a target on myself. And I'm saying, fuck you. I'm finna let you know I'm finna smash your homeboy. You know what I mean? Nah, man. It ain't can't happen like that, bro. You don't come to myself talking like that. But you been to smash one of my homies. And he ain't my homie. And in fact, I end up going to the hole over the dude from Linwood. I'm going to have to get into that. He end up snitching on me. This dude that we had with us and almost went to war with the neighborhood car over. I did something to him and he told on me. He snitched. And the police came and got me. Fucking around with these weirdos, bro. Accepting them into our culture and to our car. And this is the thanks we get. The boy told on me. I'm going to have to bring y'all that story, man. Now that I'm talking about this, I'm going to have to bring it to you. But that's what happened with the Hoovers in the neighborhoods. Thankfully, nobody really got hurt. And it wasn't a war. Sick of us killing each other anyway. Unaliving each other. Let's come together. Black power. Stay free, people!